in closing for practical things. So people can go restoreforlife.com, explore restore as one possibility. They can go spend more time in nature. Um, with regard to actual damage that is happening to the gut from glyphosate exposure and other things, top one, two, or three recommendations of what people can avoid and what they can favor that makes a difference? Yes. Fairly? So we don't want, today we haven't found anything that can compete with Restore in regard to that, you know, acceleration of protein synthesis and the frontline of defense, all that stuff. But there is other things you can do in regard to glyphosate. Number one, eating organic is smart. Now there's glyphosate in our rain and water systems and everything else. You can't get away from it, but you can certainly decrease the amount. And there's many studies that have been published now showing a decrease in chronic inflammation and different disorders by just switching to a strict uh, diet of uh, organic foods. In general, the lower you eat on the food chain, the less glyphosate is going to be present in your food, the less plastics will be in your food. So if you think about this, obviously plants being at the lowest point of your food chain, I preach a plant-based diet all the time in my clinic. If you're going to tip into the animal protein world for consumption, certainly don't go to dairy. I think dairy is extremely toxic on a lot of levels. Um, but if you go into the meats, then the small white fish, like your trout, your, your uh, sea bass, those are going to be less acidic and less prone to carrying a lot of the toxins that we're talking about, heavy metals included. If you go to the larger fish, things like tuna and salmon, those are very prone to high plastic content, high amounts of heavy metals, and of course, then the residues of the herbicides and pesticides. So the larger the animal, the more residues they're going to have of all the bad stuff because they're living off the smaller life. And so those are just some general guidelines. If there's anything else you're put in your cupboard other than restore, I would say apple cider vinegar is a great one, specifically Bragg's unfiltered organic apple cider vinegar. Bragg's happens to be have a, a mix of bacteria in there that actually can slowly break down glyphosate levels. And so that's a fun one to sprinkle on your salad uh, before you eat it and let it sit there for uh, 20 minutes or something like that and marinate your salad is all these bacteria can start breaking down any glyphosate that may be on there to begin with. And then as you eat it, there will be less glyphosate that your gut microbiome and the rest have to deal with. And you mentioned fermentation. Are there any starters that you particularly like or? Uh... The air. Yeah. So I like wild fermentation a hundred percent. And you know, the problem with all the starters is they're basically probiotics, right? So you got one species of acidophilus or a few strains of lactobacilli or the like. And so I'm a big fan of doing air fermentation. What that looks like is you make your saltwater brine, take, takes pennies, and then you just chop up cabbage, or my favorite is chop up a bunch of turnips, throw those into your brine, and then put a towel over the crock and let that air ferment for two to three days where the bacteria from the air is populating that. One of my favorite things is just to move it out to different sides of your house. In the morning, put it out you know, on, the, on your eastern porch or out in the yard where it can get some of that. And then in the evenings, put it at sunset and, and move it around the yard a couple of times just for an hour or so is enough. And then bring it back inside. Keep the towel over it the whole time. The bacteria will filter through the, through the little cheesecloth or towel, whatever you got over, just so you're not dropping leaves in your ferment. But then you might notice over a few days, there might be a little bit of a, a film or even a little bit of mold that will start growing on top of the water. That means you've done your good job. You just scrape that clean. And then I tend to bottle it just so that it's not as much work for me from day to day. Once I've got a few days of air fermentation going, I'll pour it into my bar, ball jars. I've got, you know, half gallon ball jars. You cap those. You don't want to cap them tight because they'll actually explode as they produce gas. And so you either cap them real loose so that there's some air exchange going on. But my favorite way is to cap them tight, drill a hole in the top first, and then pop one of the little the, um, air exchangers that you see in like beer brewing systems and stuff like that. You can go buy your local brewery kit and, and get that little air exchanger and pop that little cork with the air exchange into the top of the ball jar. And then you can leave that on the counter for a few more days and then stick it in the fridge and you can stay in the fridge for months while you choose when to eat it. And the nice thing about doing your own fermentation is you can pick what, what stage your palate prefers. And you're going to find out that the more denuded your microbiome is, the more challenged your gut is, the earlier in the ferment you're going to prefer. You're, it'll be sweeter. It'll, it'll have a different kind of, uh, kind of bubbliness or fizziness to it initially. And, and a lot of people with, with chronic gut issues will prefer their ferments young like that. As you get healthier, you're going to actually start craving the longer fermentation process. And so things like long ferment kimchi, the master is miso, right? The Japanese misos are the classic. If you go over to Japan, make sure you get some of their black miso, their seven-year fermented stuff. 
imagine how many speed, how many po populations or generations of bacteria are in a seven year ferment. You know, your typical sauerkraut is two to three weeks, seven years of a, a, a crop working on itself, digesting itself down. That stuff actually can reduce radioactive material. You can actually digest plutonium and other radioactive isotopes with miso. And so that stuff is like your, your holy of holies there in the, in the fermentation world. To watch the full episode or to subscribe to the podcast, click the link in the description or visit us at neurohacker.com slash collective insights.